This is Chapter 9, Applied Pharmacology for Veterinary Technicians. We're going to talk about the drugs of the therapy for the therapy of the endocrine system. The hormones we're going to talk about are reproductive, adrenal pituitary, thyroid, and exocrine and endocrine pancreas. Here are your learning objectives. Obviously, we need to know about the endocrine system, how it functions, um, the neurohormonal reflex, um, specific um, classes of gonadotropins, gonadal hormones, progestins, prostaglandins that we use, um, how, how we use drugs uh, that affect uterine contractility, pheromones, um, things that affect the thyroid gland, how do we treat hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, um, insulin, insulin products, uh, growth promoters, anabolic steroids. So a lot of stuff going on in the endocrine system, and these are things that you should be remembering from your anatomy and physiology course. In the anterior pituitary, the adenohypophysis, um, it arises um, from the um, uh, adenocells, the um, one part of the, the fetal cell, stem cells, whereas the posterior pituitary rises from nerve cells, from the neurohypophysis. What controls the pituitary is the hypothalamus and the brain, um, in which the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands sit. Now, the posterior pituitary has its effect on the uterus, the mammary gland, where, um, through oxytocin, um, but also has ADH in it, so it affects the kidneys as well. Um, the anterior uh, pituitary affects a lot of other endocrine glands, um, the endocrine gland affects, um, releases hormones that affects other affected tissues as well. And we have feedback coming back to the hypothalamus, which will change what it's telling the anterior or posterior um, pituitary glands to do. Let's remember specifically the reproductive system. Um, and it, there, the stimulus of increasing daylight versus decreasing daylight is going to change from species to species and has to do with the length of their gestation as well. It starts with the uh, hypothalamus with gonadotropin releasing hormone, so either released or inhibited. Um, touching on the anterior pituitary will release FSH, which will stimulate the ovary to develop a follicle. The follicle, as it, um, it grows, releases estrogen, which is going to feed back and cause the anterior pituitary to release LH, and then the FSH is going to start to decrease. The LH is going to support, it's going to cause the uh, ovary to release its egg. Um, it's going to support the corpus luteum, which is going to progest, uh, um, produce progesterone, which again is going to be a, a feedback uh, to the hypothalamus. Now, progesterone is either going to be increased or decreased um, depending on whether a pregnancy is um, enacted uh, by the uh, uh, egg and the sperm. Uh, the sperm fertilizing the egg and the egg implanting into the uterine wall. So in the female, we have um, the rest, re reproductive um, cycle, sometimes anestrous, um, but starts with proestrous, then estrus, then diestrus or metestrus, and it goes back to anestrus. With late anestrus, the hypothalamus is going to release that gonadotropin-releasing hormone and pituitary releases FSA to make follicles. In proestrus, the ovary is going to produce that follicle due to FSH and the pituitary is going to release the LH. During parturition, the fetus is going to produce ACTH. ACTH, adrenocorticotropin hormone, stimulates the adrenal gland to produce glucocorticoids, which stimulate the contraction of the uterus. It stimulates the uterus to produce estrogens and prostaglandins. The uterus that um, is producing estrogen and prostaglandins and the pituitary will release oxytocin in response to cervical and vaginal stimulation. Oxytocin helps uh, with an overall feeling of, of wellness and calmness and helps to release uh, milk, you know, milk let down. Gonadotropins, uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone. Um, the control of the reproductive system is coordinated in that hypothalamus. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone, also known as gonadorelin, causes the release of FSH and LH by the anterior pituitary. Chorionic gonadotropins, such as HCG, which is human chorionic gonadotropin, 
produced um, in uh, females with um, pregnancy. It can stimulate testicular descent in males, so we can use this cor um, human, uh, this chorionic gonadotropin to stimulate testicular descent if we have a cryptorchid male. It can also help us determine remnant testicular uh, tissue if we have a castrated male that is exhibiting behavior um, that they should not. It also can cause infertility. Is a um, birth control device. Um, it induces ovulation, but once it induces ovulation, it 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 stops ovulation or um, estrus from continuing. So we might use HCG in a cow um, or a number of cows if we want to stimulate ovulation and get everybody uh, back on the same um, cycle, so we can have all our calves at once. Some reproductive hormonal drugs that we use um, to synchronize estrus or suppress estrus, induce estrus, or treat cystic ovaries and or terminate pregnancy. Some gonadotropins, these act similarly to gonadotropin releasing hormone, LH or FSH. LH is used by um, preparing it from a slaughtered animal uh, from their pituitaries or the urine from a pregnant woman, that human chorionic gonadotropin. Um, L FSH comes from slaughtered animals or pregnant mares, and GnRH can be made synthetically. Some gonad gonadal hormones that we can use, estrogens, androgens, testosterone, mevolarone, uh, and progestins like magesterol acetate, medroxyprogesterone acetate, which is Depo-Provera, which is a, a, um, a suppression of estrus, Eltranogest, Norgestimate, Melangestrol Acetate, these are these progestins. Um, they can help protect pregnancy, but they can also, uh, you can use them to have your body stop uh, going into estrus, because if your body thinks it's pregnant, it's not going to go through estrus again. So here's gonadorelin, causes release of FSH and LH. Um, we can use it for cystic ovaries in cattle, induction of estrus in cats and mares, uh, minimal side effects. Chorionic gonadotropin mimics the effect of LH and some FSH. In males, it increases secretion of male hormones in the testes and can stimulate the descent of testes. HCG is used as with uh, cystic ovaries in cattle. Sorry, cystic ovaries in cattle. In males with cryptorganism and for infertility <clears throat> uh, caused by low testosterone. So it increases testosterone. Some adverse side effects, they can be hypersensitive to it. <clears throat> so they can have a react hypersensitivity reaction and they can abort if we use it in mares before the 35th day of pregnancy. FSH um, from the pituitary causes growth and maturation of the follicle. We can induce superovulation, so if we're looking to collect eggs, um, or we can use it if we want to uh, do an out-of-season breeding, for instance, in a um, mare during the, the dark days of winter. Uh, we can use it for uh, endometrial, or we can see endometrial hyperplasia, superovulation, and follicular cysts, and we have to watch for that. Here are the gonadal hormones, estrogens, estradiol, diethylstabusterol, estrogen implants for weight gain uh, in growing animals. Um, these inhibit ovulation, increase uterine tone, proliferate the endometrium, and can cause abortions. It can treat uh, persistent CL, so if you have a CL that's hanging on there and producing progesterones, um, it will remove that. It can expel purulent material from the uterus, retain placentas and mummified fetuses um, by um, promoting um, uterine contractions. It does promote weight gain, so it's one thing that it can be used as an implant in animals that we're trying to get to. It's a it's a it's a hormone uh, that if we want to see increased muscle mass, it can induce estrus in mares in non-breeding season, and it treats urinary incontinence, especially that diethyl stilbestrol. We can see severe anemia, prolonged estrus, genital irritation, follicular cysts, and cervical cancer um, from uh, from food if we're use, if we're eating animals that have had these estrogen implants. 
androgens, more hormones, um, uh, include testosterone. Uh, this is a class three controlled drug. Also includes mebolarone. Uh, Testosterone or androgens increase male libido and promote tissue anab anabolism. So increase muscle growth, um, muscle gain or weight gain, and red blood cell formation. It can cause urinary incontinence in males and increase libido and fertility um, with some uh, poor results. Uh, adverse effects are rare or uncommon with testosterone. With milbolarone, um, it prevents estrus, blocks release of um, LH, and completes uh, completion of follicle. So it doesn't allow for the egg to be released. Um, so it's used for prevention of estrus in dogs and the treatment of pseudocyesis, which is false pregnancy. It's not used in cats. With juveniles, we'll see some premature growth plate closure and vaginitis. In mature animals, we'll see vulvovaginitis, increased body odor, etc. Some progestins, magesterol acetate, which is ovaban or megase. With dogs, it can control estrus, treat false pregnancies, prevent vaginal hyperplasia, treat severe galactorrhea, uh, and control unacceptable male behavior. With cats, it can help with derm dermatologic issues and behavior problems and controls estrus. Um, adverse effects would be hyperglycemia, so too much uh, glucose in the blood adrenal suppression, endometrial hyperplasia, and increased appetite. Depoprovero, or medroxyprogesterone acetate, can cause, uh, is used for behavioral problems. So if we're seeing aggression, roaming, spraying, mounting, can also treat dermatologic conditions. So we do often use it with um, derm issues. It can cause pyometra, personality changes, depression, lethargy, memory changes, increased appetite. Regimate or Altrenogest suppresses estrogen for synchronization um, to, uh, of, uh, for long periods. It also is used to maintain pregnancy in mares because it's progesterone. Um, norgestimate is both progestin and estrogen. It's used to synchronize um, estrus in cattle. And then melangestrol acetate is used in implants to promote weight gain. Prostaglandins. Any drug that ends with prost in the name is a prostaglandin. And these are long chain fatty acids. They have six classes, A, B, C, D, E, and F. In reproduction, we only use PGF2 alpha. Um, this mediates the various physiologic events in the body. Main use is regulation of activity in and treatment of conditions of the female reproductive tract. It can cause abortion in pregnant animals and bronchoconstriction in animals or people with respiratory disease when the people are giving this prostaglandin. So you see all this prost, dinoprost, um, lutelice is one, uh, fenprostoline, fluprostanol, equimate, uh, fenprostoline is bovaline, fluprostanol is equimate, cloprostanol, so sodium is estromate. Um, these all cause lysis of the corpus luteum, contraction of the uterus, and relaxation of the cervix. Um, we use this in estrus synchronization. If we have a silent estrus, pyometra, abortion in cattle, dogs, sheep and goats, induction of parturition in swine, and controlling estrus in mares. Um, with cows, uh, we use it for abortion and synchronization of estrus. Again, synchronization in horses and induction of birth um, and facilitate postpartum breeding. Uh, for corpus luteum cysts, for mummified fetuses, abortion and synchronization. Do you have to watch for things like sweating and abdominal pain, dyspnea, panting, urination, defecation, increased vocalization? These are uh, all things that these prostaglandins can cause um, uh, pretty much all the way down the board. Um, again, very important that anybody using it is not pregnant and does not have asthma. Oxytocin is made in the hypothalamus and stored in the posterior pituitary for release in response to appropriate stimuli from the reproductive tract or mammary glands. It causes forceful uterine contractions and assists in the delivery of the fetus in the placenta. It can also reduce bleeding of the uterus after delivery. It also helps with milk letdown. It is stored in the refrigerator. Sorry. Important to make sure that that cervix is dilated. The baby needs to be able to fit in the cervix. 
or through the cervix and the calcium levels need to be normal why because the calcium level has to is calcium is used to contract the uterus if we have no calcium then the uterus will not contract it will pull in the calcium and then we'll have a hypocalcemic animal that will start to seize or collapse oxytocin should be used in dystocia only after the reproductive tract has been adequately examined if we don't examine appropriately um, it can lead to uterine torsion or rupture and death a single dose of oxytocin lasts approximately 15 minutes i usually will redose it in 20 minutes and if i'm not seeing any changes i will uh, definitely check the calcium first and then probably do a, uh, a c-section after that we do want to store it in the fridge Ergot. Ergot is a naturally occurring substance that causes problems with pregnant animals. It's a fungus that grows on rye grass and possibly on some pasture grasses. It causes smooth muscle contraction and can cause intense vasoconstriction. This is a picture of a rye plant with ergot fungus on it. Corticosteroids are produced by the adrenal cortex and are used primarily for the anti-inflammatory effect, but can also induce parturition in the last trimester of pregnancy. It mimics the natural rise in production of corticosteroids by the fetus as the time for delivery draws near. Stress, this is why stress induces birth. So this is why pregnant women that are very close to delivery, uh, if they're in a stressful situation, will go into labor. Pheromones. Uh, pheromones are hormones um, or that are chemicals that are released by the body uh, that uh, animal we smell them too but we don't perceive them um, but we react to them our bodies will react to them um, uh, in animals uh, we use different ones like feel away or um, adaptil to help to calm animals Growth promoters, these are primary sex steroids used to promote weight gain, and the most common one is estrogen. Um, we use estradiol uh, to promote weight gain by water retention, increased protein synthesis, increased fat deposition, and increased release of growth hormone, which is uh, bovine somatotropin. Testosterone is used as an adjunct to estradiol in some growth promotion products because a second component in the compound slows the release of estradiol and prolongs its effective lifespan. So this can cause um, tissue metabolism and growth and has these anabolic effects, makes muscle. Progesterone, trenbolone, and xeranol. Progesterone is added to growth promoters to slow the release of estradiol. Xeranol is an analog of a naturally occurring plant estrogen that increases feed efficiency, protein synthesis, and growth rate. And trenbolone is a synthetic anabolic agent that improves feed efficiency and promotes weight gain in steers. It's uh, used as a sole agent in some growth promoting pr um, preparations. And this is how we implant it. Um, they're put into compressed pellets that are implanted into the subcutaneous tissue of the dorsal middle third of the ear. So here's the injection site, and here's where it's implanted. Okay, typically intended for breathing purposes or uh, or we don't want to use it, I'm sorry, for uh, animals that are used for breeding purposes or to dairy cattle because it'll get into the milk and will affect uh, their estrous cycles. So we have to be very careful as we use it. Growth hormone or bovine somatotropin, bovine growth hormone, you probably heard a lot about it in the food that you eat. Um, it, somatotropin is a growth hormone that is produced by the anterior pituitary. Um, the function before the, um, it functions before the onset of uh, puberty to stimulate growth. It's been used to show, sorry, it's been shown to increase growth rate and feed efficiency in farm animals. It is FDA approved. Um, people who advocate the use of advocate the use of organic food products may oppose the use of this product because this somatotropin, this growth hormone can affect our own hormones moving on from the reproductive tract to the adrenal gland hyperadrenocortisolism when we have an increase in stress hormones that is also known as cushing's disease okay so increased circulating corticosteroids it is can be either pituitary dependent or adrenal dependent okay so 85 percent of the patients have a brain tumor and 15 percent have an abdominal tumor most common in dogs and cats 
If it's an adrenal tumor, it's an abdominal tumor, 50% of those are benign. So I would much rather have, even though it's much less likely, I would much rather have an adrenal tumor. This is what the, uh, the dog will look like. A little white dog, loss of hair, big flappy, uh, flaccid abdomen. They're, they look like they're overweight, but and that could be due to a change in the way they deposit their um, fat stores, but it's also because they have decreased muscle mass. We could see diabetes uh, due to glucose breakdown. Remember, corticosteroids uh, make the uh, animal hyperglycemic. Loss of hair, thin skin, weight gain, immunosuppressed, pot bellied appearance, increased thirst, decreased eating. So they're going to drink a lot of water. And that's how we know how much to treat them. The treatment for, uh, there are three treatments for Cushing's disease. Uh, mitotane, which is lysodrin, ketoconazole, also known as nazarol, and selegaline, which is anapril. So these three treat Cushing's disease. This causes selective necrosis of the adrenal gland cortex. So if they have a brain tumor and the pituitary gland is affected, this doesn't help. So this kills off parts of the adrenal gland so that it releases less corticosteroid hormone. We have to give it a loading dose and then get it to the lowest dose possible because we don't want to kill too much of the adrenal gland. We can cause hypoadrenocorticism if we give too much. Ketoconazole is an antifungal agent. It will not reduce the gland size, but it does inhibit the production of corticosteroids. It can cause liver damage. Selegaline or anapril is a dopamine reuptake inhibitor. We've talked about it before. It's used for the treatment of pituitary Cushing's. It can also be given for old dog dementia and cardiac issues. So it's got a lot of um, things that we use it for. We do, it is contraindicated with MAO inhibitors, so norepinephrine inhibitors norepinephrine ACE inhibitors, basically. Hypoadrenocortisolism is what? It's Addison's disease. Addison's disease. And Addison's disease is when we have too little hormone. And not only too little corticosteroids, but also that mineralocorticoid uh, aldosterone. Okay, Without aldosterone, we are not maintaining our water intake. Um, and so we are urinating all of the electrolytes out, all the water out, and that's really um, decreasing our ability to maintain uh, homeostasis. So what we'll see is a decrease in corticosteroids, hyperpotassium, hyperkalemia, increased urination, hyponatremia, which is low sodium, muscle weakness, lethargy. Um, our treatment is we need to supplement that those mineral corticoids. And there's one, it's called percortin, and it mimics aldosterone. So it maintains hydration. It's an antidiuretic. Um, we can supplement corticosteroids in acute crises and stressful conditions as well. So they'll often get prednisone as well. All right, to our thyroid gland. Um, the thyroid regulates metabolism. It helps to control normal turnover of the epidermis, normal heart rate and rhythm, control weight loss and gain, the rate and amount that food is consumed, their activity level, their strength, and their nerve and muscle health. It's influenced by the thyroid stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland. TSH causes thyroid hormones to be synthesized and released, and we have two different um, forms. T3 is the active ingredient at the tissue site. T4 is what we see in the bloodstream. T4 is converted by the tissues to T3. The medications that we use to treat supplement T4. Um, so it, we treat these horm hormone imbalances in dogs, cats, um, so they supplement or reduce T4. Um, horses, po uh, ruminants, pocket pets, and exotics. So every, anybody can get it. Goiter is when we have inadequate levels of iodide in the diet. And lack of iodide causes the thyroid to be unable to produce T3 or T4. Um, so we'll see an increase in the size of the thyroid gland trying to be out to out um, to make these things. We almost never see this anymore if they're getting a commercial diet. Hypothyroidism we see in dogs. Dogs need a supplement of thyroid hormone. Um, so it decreases met metabolic rate found in dogs, horses, cattle, birds, and hedgehogs. See increased weight, sluggish, decreased immune system. 
primary, primarily 95% of the patient, it's due to a decrease of hormones, usually just an idiopathic degeneration of the nor normal thyroid tissue, not sure why it's decreasing. Secondarily, could be a decrease in production of TSH in 5% of the patients, so we have to test for that. We, we supplement with T4, um, usually levothyroxine. You can give thyro Synthroid or Thyrotab. We are going to treat once or twice a day, usually twice a day for life. Um, going to test those T4 levels at three to four weeks after and six months um, there, every six months thereafter because they're going to stay on it forever. We want to test for peak levels because if we make the animal take too much supplement, what are their side effects going to be? They're going to be hyper. Hyperthyroidism, everything's speeding up. So in hypothyroidism, everything slows down. Now we're speeding things up. It increases the circulating thyroid hormone. Siamese cats have a higher occurrence. 98% of patients have a benign hyperplasia, a tumor of the thyroid gland. Uh, we can have a secondary disease. Um, a, um, a murmur is heard, right? So it's a cardiovascular disease, okay? So we can have a secondary cardiovascular disease. Um, we can also have a disease of the renal uh, system of the kidney that it's not secondary to hyperthyroidism, but it's hid by the hyperthyroidism. So we have to watch for that. Um, so if we surgically excise the, the thyroid, we're going to have to supplement. So we take away the normal thyroid, we're going to have to supplement. So how do we supplement? T4, just like we do with dogs. Um, we can use a medication called methimazole, which blocks hormone production. Um, and that is very helpful, especially if we want to find out if there's underlying kidney disease. We can kill the tumor cells with radiation, which is probably one of the best ways to do it. If we have an animal that has kidney disease as well, we can do a food change to Hills yd and that is supportive of the kidney as well as reducing the iodine in the food. But the cat can only eat that prescription food. So methimazole is the drug of choice for maintenance. Um, it blocks the incorporation of iodide into the thyroid molecule, it, so it can't make thyroid hormones. Um, we can see anorexia, vomiting, skin eruptions, bleeding, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, and it, it can increase kidney dysfunction if they have underlying renal disease. Radioactive iodine is the drug of choice for the cure of hyperthyroidism. It's selectively taken up by and concentrated by active tumor cells, so it will kill those tumor cells. It is expensive, and it does require a hospital stay because it's a ra radioactive compound that we're injecting. The pancreas, it functions as both exocrine organ and endocrine organ. It's responsible for the release of digestive enzymes as well as insulin and glucagon. These are made in the islets of Langerhans. Glucose is the energy source for normal function in the cells. And if we can't, we, we have too much uh, glucose, we're not regulating the glucose, uh, that can change some things in the body. So insulin uh, normally will inhibit the breakdown of fat, protein, and glycogen into forms that can be used as energy sources. The net goal is to decrease glucose concentration by enhancing the uptake of distribution and distribution of glucose to the body tissues. This allows the liver to store glucose as glycogen and facilitates the deposition of fat into adipose tissue. Diabetes mellitus is the inability or impairment of the secretion of insulin by the pancreas, resulting in hyperglycemia, which will destroy organs and cause infections, because, and then we'll have glucosuria, so that will also cause PUPD, because it's uh, glucose, it's pulling water with it out into the urine, and we'll see bladder infections as well, because that's feeding the bacteria. There are two types of diabetes mellitus. First is insulin dependent, that means no insulin is formed, so we have to supplement the insulin. Non-insulin dependent means we have decreased production, but it's not being taken up into the cells. It's not doing the work that it needs to do. And we can help with that type two diabetes with a change in food. Insulin used as treatment, we do wanna do a glucose curve just to determine the dose that we need. Um, Usually that's what we start with, although sometimes we'll just start with a low dose and start testing uh, frequently. 
It is not effective when given orally because the digestive tract will break down the protein molecule before it's even absorbed. Insulin concentration is measured in units of insulin per milliliter. And it's available in concentrations of 40 units per milliliter, 100 units per milliliter, or 500 units per milliliter. Milliliter. So U40, U100, U500. Um, it's derived from various sources, and only animal-based insulin is approved for use in animals. So beef and pork is approved for use in animals. We do use human-based insulin in animals, usually to get started on the treatment of the uh, uh, of the um, diabetes. So it is important you know the difference between insulin types. There is the short-acting regular insulin. It's made from zinc insulin uh, crystals. It's used to treat diabetic ketoacidosis until blood glucose is reduced and the animal is stable. Uh, Intermediate-acting is uh, NPH, or neutral protamine hagedorn insulin, or PZI. This is the one that's commonly used, protamine zinc insulin. So these two are formulated for veterinary use, but we do use humulin and novulin as needed. This is a cloudy suspension of zinc insulin crystals in protamine zinc. It's a fish protein uh, and zinc, which prolongs the absorption and activity of the product, so it acts a little bit longer. Our long acting is glargine or lantus and dedimer or levimer, which is, these are human label. These are longer acting insulins that we can give once a day versus twice a day. Um, but most often we're giving it twice a day as Vetslin or PZI vet. We need to make sure that we communicate to the owner that it's usually best to feed the animal 20 minutes before giving the injection. 20 minutes. Cloudy insulins, you want to, what do you want to do with these cloudy insulins? We don't want to shake them. We want to roll them so we don't break those, those fragile proteins. Roll it between your palms, don't shake them. NPH insulin should not be mixed with any lenti insulin. So we don't want to mix lenti insulin with NPH insulin. Um, it is the opinion of some people that insulin should be disposed of after 30 days or 100 injections. That's because the protein uh, efficacy decreases. And so what you're going to see is that uh, it is not as effective. You're going to see to start, start to see hyperglycemia. Injection sites should be rotated. Clients should be advised to use insulin syringes only once. Mild to moderate hypoglycemia resulting from an overdose can be treated by feeding the animal or administering glucose or dextrose or caro syrup, something that has sugar in it. Okay. Different insulins are measured in different units, and you have to match the syringe units to the insulin. And table 9.2 has the insulin syringes for you in your book. Some other hypoglycemic agents. These are used to treat uh, non-insulin-dependent uh, diabetes mellitus. Um, sulfonylureas, this um, stimulates insulin secretions, not usually well tolerated by cats. It decreases hepatic glucose production increases the number of cellular insulin responders, and some um, forms of it are glipizide and metformin. So those are used for um, type 2 diabetes mellitus. So here is a list of our endocrine drugs. This is not complete, but these are the main ones that I would like you to remember. In the reproductive side, human chorionic gonadotropin, PGF2-alpha, estrogens, progesterone, oxytocin, anabolic steroids, pheromones, and corticosteroids. For adrenal pituitary, mitotane, ketoconazole, anapril, ACTH, or dexamethasone for testing, percortin, and corticosteroids. For thyroid, T4 supplements, T3 supplementation, or TSH supplementation, methimazole, radioactive iodine treatment, Hills yd For endocrine, pancreatic insufficiencies, insulin could be ultra short-acting, ultra long-acting, anywhere in between and sulfonylureas. For excrine pancreatic insufficiencies, something like viocase or pancreasine are typically used. You will need to know where these are used, why they're used, and what happens when you overdose them. 
Um, often when you're overdosing on the, in the endocrine list, you're doing the opposite. So whatever the disease is, hypothyroidism, you're overdosing, you're making hyperthyroidism. If it's hypoadrenocorticism, you overdose, you're going to make hyperadrenocorticism. So it's all that and vice versa. If you have any questions, bring those to class and let's discuss them because you're probably not the only one.